Hi everybody, I'm going to talk you through the process of taking something you've made in LEGO Studio and preparing it to move into a normal 3D modeling environment. This video is for my 200 level experience design class, but it should be of interest to anyone who wants to take a LEGO 3D model and move it into a traditional uh, 3D pipeline. Let's get started. The first program we're going to use is kind of a self-contained entity. In fact, you could theoretically render you know, your stuff in this program, but we're going to kind of take it a step above and beyond that. <clears throat> Lego Studio, you might have heard of because you heard of some Lego set that you thought was unusual, like a Queer Eye for the Straight Guy kind of set that's a little bit out of the normal wheelhouse. But the point is, is that Lego Studio is a way for people to design Lego sets without having to buy all of those Legos. It's a digital design tool that Lego uses to allow fans to both submit their own ideas to this thing, Lego ideas, as well as to order the individual parts. And that's what Bricklink is. is Bricklink is kind of, it was a third party website that then Lego bought. It was basically where Lego fans would go. I need 300 blue ones of a certain size. Well, Bricklink was where that was done. Lego purchased it. And it's kind of like where they, I think of them as like their most intense Lego users kind of would be the Bricklink people. And the vast majority of Lego users have never heard of this. And so anyway, but Bricklink is where you're going to go to find something called Lego Studio 2.0. Just Google it, download Lego Studio 2.0, and it'll take you to this website. You click that yellow button, and then it's going to put a PKG file in your downloads directory. It will probably queue to open up automatically. Just say yes to pretty much everything. You're going to install it when you're done. The link is here as well. Okay, when that is finished, it's going to create a directory on your hard drive called Studio 2.0. Okay, and this is where I start saying things like, this is not an app on your iPad. Okay, the reason professors like me hate iPads and iPhones and iCloud is because it does a lot of the file management for you. So the people have no idea. Like people will come to me and say, my hard drive is filled up, I think, and the hard drive is half filled. Okay, like, so you have to know I have an applications directory on my hard drive and in there is a folder and in that folder, our two programs are going to use, but we're going to get to that later. The next thing you're going to install is called LeoCAD. Now, Lego Studio comes in as a PKG file on Mac. It's a package file. It's kind of like a zip, but it's a little bit more automated. A DMG file is different. It's a disk image, okay? And it's like a fake um, USB stick or something. You know, like they don't have CD-ROM drives on computers anymore. How do we get people software? Well, that's what a DMG file is. So you'll find that in your downloads directory. And then when you double click on it, it mounts it. So therefore, it will look like a hard drive or a CD-ROM or an external hard drive on your computer. You can see the lower arrow is pointing to it. And so what you're going to do is take that fold, that, that application, that red brick right there, and you're going to drag it into the Lego Studio directory, which I just showed you. Okay, so that is the next thing. Now, you don't have to do that. You can put it somewhere else in your hard drive, I guess, but that's where I like to do it. So that way, everything is contained. So you can see we have LeoCAD is in there, and then that uh, the other icon lower is Lego Studio. But my arrow is pointing at a folder called LDRAW. Okay, if you are a iPad user or whatever, you're used to your computer doing all these things for you, okay? One of the things about LDRAW is that this is something that fans made. They did an all open source, open documentation, and Lego did the right thing by working with pre-existing fan efforts. The vast majority of companies would never do that. They would do the wrong thing and alienate all their fans and make a terrible version. Well, Lego did the right thing. They're an ethical company. And so they uh, adhered to LDRAW. And so what I'm saying is that that arrow, it's pointing to a folder called LDRAW. That is a library of every Lego brick ever made. Okay. And that is important because we need to go. So the, before we start Lego Studio, Lego Studio knows it's there. But LeoCAD does not. LeoCAD is a different version of LDRAW. And you might say to yourself, why would I want that? We already have one. But Lego's Lego Studio is primarily designed to sell bricks. It's for Lego parts designers. It's not for rendering or animation or anything like that. 
LeoCAD is an LDRAW compatible program, but the person who made this made it better for exporting, basically. So we're going to use LeoCAD for one thing and one thing only, and that is to take a LEGO Studio program and convert it into something for Blender. Okay, so once you start LeoCAD, you're going to go to the Preferences menu, and you're going to go to Parts Library. Preferences in the upper left-hand corner. You click on the name LeoCAD way up in the upper left, and then you'll see Preferences, and you have to make sure that that Parts Library is going to Applications, LEGO Studio, LEGO Draw. So therefore, both of the tools we're using are using the same library. Okay. Why? Because Lego updates its parts all the time. They just put out, you know, a chili pepper costume. They put out a new kind of dog, you know, and so fans, the most intense Lego users will realize like, oh, I'm doing a big red dragon. And if I got 500 of the chili pepper costume, I could make the tail out of that or something. Do you see what I mean? So like in the Eiffel Tower set, they made a hot dog for the minifigures and then the pe designers of the Eiffel Tower realized like well could we get the hot dog in gray and therefore we're going to use that as lattice work all right so anyway if you are non-corporate this is totally optional probably ignore this but LDRAW is the real source I would be remiss as your instructor for not mentioning this website okay this is the central effort to make uh, kind of an open source modeler Legos works with this platform as I said a very great idea for Lego Okay, and so this is where you can go and get, if you see at the bottom, it says complete.zip. You don't have to do this, but you can also get a set of parts that way. Now, it is not completely compatible, and the main issue is stickers. And so we'll talk about that, right? Like, is a part with a sticker a separate part, or is it a part and a sticker? Well, in my experience, that seems to be the difference, so we'll handle that as well. All right, and the last thing you're going to do is install Blender. And I'm going to show you this process right now. Okay, so here is the process. You're going to model a thing in LEGO Studio 2.0. So use that to make your thing. Whatever you want to make, you can just take a pre-existing set and edit it. I don't care for my assignment. It's more about thinking about a client, thinking about the client's experience, and matching that client's uh, interest. Okay, and so it's a short project. Um, and so anyway, so the point is, is that whatever you've made in Lego Studio, it can be a custom minifigure, it can be a little set. Okay, then when you're done with it, and I mean done, okay, like that process is completed, you're 100% happy with your Lego Studio application, then you're going to go to the file pull down menu in Lego Studio and say export as an LDRAW file. Okay, and you have to put it in a folder you control. And I'm heartbroken by saying this, but more and more young people have no idea what is going on in their hard drive. You know, students will come to me and they have 5,000 things under their, their documents directory, or they've never cleaned out their downloads directory. Okay, you need to understand what's on your hard drive. I'm apologizing. I roll if you know this. So anyway, but as I say, a folder you control, you need to know where these things are saved. Okay. And then if your set has decals, here's our little asterisk here. If your set has decals, you need to export it twice as a Kayata, both in the same place. The Kayata, we're not actually going to do anything with, but that will export the decals. And so now I'm going to open it in LeoCAD. Okay, the decals might cause a little problem there. Everything else should work. And then when you open it, and I, I always want to import it in LeoCAD. So you're quitting Lego Studio. You open it in LeoCAD. And then LeoCAD will export it as this file type called a Wavefront OBJ. Okay, and then that will essentially you can bring into any 3D modeler pretty much. We'll read an OBJ. It's a very old 3D modeling format. So let's take a look at what you're going to get here. I'm now going to walk you through this process. So in my downloads directory, there's the Studio 2.0 package. I've downloaded it, I double click on it, and then that's gonna walk you through the install and it creates a directory. Here I am, so this, remember, this is your finder. I'm gonna applications and it makes a directory down there, Studio 2.0. If you want them down here, remember, you can drag these things down, right? That's, you just drag it into the dock like that and that makes it more convenient for you. You don't have to, but both of my um, LDROP programs are in there. The directory is in there this is all the parts you can see all these parts see parts okay and then we also have the two programs all right so now I go here to do this now 
I'm going to go over how to do it in particular. But you basically, there's so many Lego parts, almost everybody starts by typing in Simpsons, or not Simpsons, by something. You start by searching, and then up here are the categories. So if I wanted to do a tile, like this one, okay, I could click on that, and then it will show me it, and I just drag it out, as you know. You drag out heads, okay. If you want the color, that's up here. You gotta click on the name to get it. I, oh, gotta have that highlighted and click on the name to get it. So now we have Yellow Lisa. Okay, and then I'm going to purposely pick something that won't. I'm going to pick well, something that works and something that won't. Okay, and so if I go here and I'm going to find a, um, let's say, there's one in here I know won't work if I typed in the word sweater. Okay, I am purposely doing one that I b will believe not work. And, and let me prove myself wrong. There's one that won't work because that is a sticker on the front. Okay, I'm purposely doing that. This is actually in the 3D model. Okay, and then FYI, just or just so I can do that, I'm going to put this here. And just to remember, there's Fred's head. We'll see if that goes. And then I can also put on an arm. And I'm just going to refresh your memory about hinging here. So if I go arm, you can see there's all kinds of arms there. But I can go here to the minifigures to find one. These have arms, right? So these have arms included. Oh, there we go. Left arm. And I can take that and stick it on there. Whoops, that didn't go. Left arm would have to go on this side. There it goes. And then if I want to hinge it, I click on it, and I hit the hinge button up here, and that will allow me to move it. If I don't want it to hinge, I could take the arms there. But if you want it to hinge, that's how you do it. Okay, so I have this sort of terrible Lego set, and I'm done, let's say. I'm 100%, so I'm going to say export as an L draw. Okay, I have made a directory called example process on my hard drive, on my desktop, and I'm going to call this Lisa. And what that will do when I say save is it's going to make a directory, or I'm sorry, it's going to make, if I go to example process, there it is. Notice it's a singular file. There is no JPEGs, there are no PNGs, anything like that. So now I'm going to go to LeoCAD, which looks very similar, right? But I'm going to go file open. I always want to import. Nope, it's open. Okay, no, I don't want to save that one. That's my previous example. I go to the desktop. I go to example process and I'm going to bring in Lisa. Okay. And you can see up oh, Fred's works, but the other one doesn't. And that was on purpose. Okay. There's no sticker there. This does. And I'm going to get to blender for the 3d people who are a little bit more savvy on 3d modeling at this point, I'll show you the difference. So I need to go back to Lego studio and do one more thing file export as, and I'm going to export it as a Coyota file. And I don't know if I'm supposed to pronounce it that way, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, and I don't care, include the logo, sure. Okay, and then I'm going to put it in the same place. Lisa Scotta. And I don't have to call it Kayata. I should probably have an extension at the end. But you're going to see when I go to that directory, look what it did. It made, dun, 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 it put the textures as a PNG file. Okay, that's why. The DAE, I could actually literally delete this. I don't care, that's junk. But that is actually what I want, is this texture. Now, when we get to the final stage, which is the 3D modeling stage, this and this, boy, oh boy, those look very similar, but there's a considerable difference. So my final step here is to export as a, whoops, I'm in Lego Studio. Go the right one, Dinkus. Here, okay, and I'm gonna go to File, Export, and that is where it has a wave front. Notice all the rest of them are there. Okay, 3D Studio, I'm actually shocked, that's really old. That's a 3DS file. And like, I mean, almost nothing supports that anymore. But a wavefront, okay, a wavefront is so old. I mean, like, this is, I don't, it's definitely from the 90s. I was using wavefront files in the 90s. It might even be from the 80s. But the point is, is if it's so old and it's been going for that long, chances are programs support it. Okay, so I'm going to call this Lisa Final Export. Just so you know what it is, it's going to make an OBJ file there. Right, and so if I look in that directory, an OBJ file and an MTL file. Okay, and I can actually see it here. By the way, if you go to this columns view on Mac, it's one of the few things I think Mac does way better than Windows. Is this? I have to admit, if I'm, I'm sorting 3D models, geez, it's way easier on Mac. Okay, and there it is. Now that, but notice no texture on that thing. Uh, uh, uh. This is about exporting properly. Well, let's go to our final boss. Oh, there's one I did previous. We're going to get rid of that guy. And I'm going to go to File, Import, 
the OBJ. Now I'm in Blender. Okay, I'm going to import that OBJ. Okay, and there it is. Let's see, I go to my directory, example process, and there is Lisa final export. So I'm going to import that. Here it is. I can zoom out a little bit. And if I go to my texture view to make sure I have textures there, you can see that Lisa has an ascot. It's Fred from Scooby-Doo. That is there, but why is that sticker there? Well, I'm going to really quickly show you something in 3D to understand the difference of our next and why we're doing the next step. The newer models, like this thing right here, that is a vector line. And so if I go to edit mode, you'll notice, look at that. It's points. Those are, this is, that drawing is actually 3D modeled into that plate. Okay. Same thing goes for Fred's ascot. Okay. Like Lisa's dressed up like Fred from Scooby-Doo for some reason. Okay, because that's what I randomly picked. But if I go to Lisa's, you see there's her face, and that is also little points. So that is not a sticker. It's almost like there's no way to get that off there. It's kind of cool for us. All right, so what am I going to do? I am going to go. We need to get that on there. Okay, so I'm going to rotate around, and I should actually, by the way, the first thing I always tend to do, and this is like such a standard thing in 3D, I'm going to type in RX negative 90. Okay, that makes everything stand up. So rotate on the x-axis, negative 90. That's very standard in 3D. Which way is up? It changes program to program. And that allows me to see that doesn't have a sticker on it. So I'm going to go to edit mode real quick. And if you probably, there are other ways of doing it, but this is the way I'm going to do it. I take those two in the front and I grab those two things in the front. Okay, so I am looking at those things like that. I believe I can go to the view here and say viewport, and I could even say front. Okay, so I'm looking at that thing directly from the front. Now, what am I going to do? Well, here's our texture over here. You see, these are all the textures, and we'll get into that in class, but right now everything is a single kind of big part. You might not want that if things are going to move, but regardless, okay, I know that that is white 002. So I'm going to make a new texture here, okay, and we're going to call that decal. Okay, maybe more than one decal. Whoops, decal. Okay, so I made a new texture called decal. I go to U and I say, and I press the U button. That's for UV unwrap. Okay, and I'm going to say project from view. Pow. Okay, now I know that anything that is loaded on there will go right there. And so all I have to do is on that folder called decal, is I'm going to go to my texture view, or I'm sorry, my shader view, shader editor. Here it is. It's this tiny little thing. I know it's so annoying. But then when I say add texture, image texture right there, will open. And then I can go to that same directory, example process, and there's that texture. And when I put that on there, hopefully. Okay, if I go to my right view, let's see, and I'm going to have to, oh, I got to do one more thing. I got to say assign. Okay, and there it is. Now it's not in the right spot, so I can go to my UV editing and see, oh, there it is. It's way off here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to grab that. I press G. I move it over here. I press S and X. That X, X scales it on the X axis. S and Y, that's going to scale on the tall axis and grab. And so basically, stickers are a little, I might come up with a better process for this, but essentially that is a surefire way of getting your stickers on there. Okay, now when I go back to my layout mode, it might not be perfect, but I would tweak it under UV. So basically, that is the process. Okay, if you're going from Lego Studio to something like Blender, you're going to export it as a LDRAW file from LEGO Studio. You open it in LeoCAD and then export it as a wavefront. The only caveat is that if you have decals, those decals will probably need to be reapplied as textures at the end. There might be a way, better way of doing it. I UV unwrapped it there. I'm curious to see if it worked directly, but essentially that is the basic process. You install LEGO Studio, you install LeoCAD, you make sure that LeoCAD's parts library is the same one as LEGO Studio, and then you install Blender. And pretty much after that, you have a nice little process in order to take your LEGO Studio creations and render them 
uh, like a professional 3D modeler.